The research described in this video was carried out by students of one of the Slovenian secondary schools, under the supervision of a professor of biology, and a researcher from the Institute for Water of the Republic of Slovenia. Have you ever heard of a vast plastic island in the Pacific Ocean? Have you heard of the problems that turtles have with plastic straws? Have you ever heard that fish often eat plastic in the water? In recent years, much attention has been paid to the problem of environmental pollution by plastics. In this way, awareness of its adverse effects is growing, but the issue of microplastics remains hidden and unknown to people. This is precisely what attracted the students to explore the subject in more detail. They decided to carry out pilot measurements of microplastics in red-eye fish in the Mura River Basin, to determine which factors significantly influence the concentration of the microplastics in the fishes. Before the study, they set out four hypotheses. First, the amount of microplastics in fish increases with the size of the fish. Second, the amount of microplastics per fish increases along the Mura River. Third, that fish contain various forms of microplastics, that are fibers, fragments, films, foams, pellets and granules. Fourth, the amount of microplastics is higher in fish from standing waters and smaller in liquid water fish. Before revealing the research results, we need to know what microplastic is. It is a substance that represents one of the most critical global problems. The problem is a consequence of the decomposition of plastics into smaller particles, ranging from 1 micrometer to 5 millimeters. Microplastics can be divided into six categories shown on the screen fibers, fragments, films, pellets, foam, and granules. The primary source of ocean pollution is rivers. 70% of all microplastics come into the ocean by rivers. Microplastics come into rivers with sewage from industrial plants direct discharge of waterways, treatment plants, precipitation, etc. However, it seems that the biggest are the households. For example, washing machines remove vast amounts of synthetic fibers from clothing, flush them into wastewater, and threw them into rivers and oceans. Microplastics have many adverse effects on organisms. They are divided into physical, such as mechanical damage, the illusion of satiety, and deterioration of the immune system, then the chemical, among which organic contaminants and additives are found, which are added to plastics and are harmful once they begin to be excreted inside the organisms, and biological influences, which are bacterial pathogens that can cause dangerous diseases. A month ago, microplastics were discovered for the first time in human blood, and researchers found them in as much as 80% of the people tested. This suggests that microparticles can travel around the body and stay in the internal organs, which can cause serious health problems. The students used different methods of work in their research. First, they chose the type of fish and the location of the fishing. Then they analyzed the samples in the lab. They then determined the particle's chemical composition and finally conducted statistical analysis. They chose the freshwater redfish because it occurs in both liquid and standing waters, is omnivorous, and is not difficult to catch. They selected five locations for fishing, ensuring that they were evenly distributed along the river Mura. Three locations are directly on the river, and two are artificial lakes. Still, they belong to the river basin, as the water from the first lake flows into the Mura River, and the river often floods the second one. They also included the sites of major industrial areas and treatment plants, as they were interested in whether they impacted the amount of microplastics. After they were caught, the fish were weighed, measured their length, removed the gutted, and weighed. Next, the students dissolved the guts in a 10% potassium hydroxide solution and kept them at room temperature for three days. The contents of the glass were then filtered. Next, they transferred the prepared samples into petri dishes, divided into quarters for better transparency, appropriately marked and systematically examined under a microscope. In doing so, they ensured that there was no contamination from the air. Analyzing samples was lengthy, taking about 60 minutes for one sample and 50 samples to be examined. In the continuation, they determined the chemical composition of the samples with an infrared spectrometer. 
They also had to conduct a statistical analysis to confirm or reject the hypotheses. Finally, they helped each other with Excel and did the ANOVA and the T-test. They searched for microplastic particles in 50 samples, collected between the 17th and the 25th of October 2020. At each location mentioned before, they took 10 samples to make the data valid, and draw credible conclusions. 94% of fish samples contained microplastics. They found 239 microplastic particles in two out of six categories. These were fibers and fragments. They found 230 fibers of different colors and lengths. The photos show a few examples of fibers, photographed with the help of a microscope. They discovered some particles more easily than the ones on the right, while others represented on the right were somewhat more difficult, because they were hidden in organic matter. They discovered nine fragments of irregular and sharp shapes and colorful colors. Since fragments are more interesting for research, they were examined by infrared spectrometry. This method easily analyzed the polymeric materials, as they have different chemical bonds and specific vibrational characteristics. As a result, they emit specific spectra that separate plastic from other organic and inorganic substances. They compared the resulting spectra with examples from the polymer spectra library and thus attempted to identify them. To be sure that it is a chemical composition of the particles, the sample matching with the one in the library must be at least 70%. In this case, the match was very high, about 98%. On the screen, we show an example of a spectrograph that indicates that the pattern on the left is polypropylene chemical composition. On the left graph, we can see that the amount of microplastics depends on the weight of the fish. The correlation coefficient is very high. They also found a correlation between the amount of microplastics and the length of the fish. The correlation coefficient is slightly lower than the weight but still high, which means that the first hypothesis can be confirmed. After conducting an ANOVA test analysis, they concluded that the amount of microplastics did not differ statistically between fishing locations. Thus, it can be supposed that Slovenian wastewater treatment plants and industrial plants do not significantly impact the quantity of microplastics. As already mentioned, the samples identified two of the six microplastic categories. These were fibers and fragments. We see that fibers have been heavily dominated everywhere, so we can conclude that the amount of microplastics is really the most influenced by households, that is, washing machines. On the right graph, we can see that the amount of microplastic particles along the river flow is increasing. When comparing the amount of microplastics in liquid and standing waters, they found that the amount of microplastics from liquid and standing waters do not differ statistically significantly. The first hypothesis was confirmed, as the students found a correlation between the amount of microplastics with the weight and length of the fish. However, they rejected the second hypothesis, as they discovered no statistically significant difference between the amounts of microplastics at different locations along the Mura River. Therefore, in this hypothesis, they considered only the locations directly adjacent to the Mura River. The third hypothesis can be confirmed, as microplastic particles are indeed present in fish, but only from two of the six possible categories. Finally, the fourth hypothesis is rejected, as they found that differences in the quantities of microplastics in liquid and standing waters are not statistically significant. They proved this through a t-test, which, like ANOVA, examines the presumptions of equality of two averages. At the beginning of 2021, only six studies were carried out in Europe on microplastics in freshwater fish. A small amount of research in this field has made the students aware that awareness of this topic is inferior. For this reason, they sent the results of their research to many people, including local fishermen, the media, and the surrounding population. They also started writing scientific article. They were also invited to the Slovenian parliament, where they presented the research results at the meeting, thus contributing to the ban on single-use plastic products. Furthermore, they performed on numerous radio and television shows, and we also achieved a gold award at the International Conference for Young Scientists. As a result, the number of research focusing on microplastics has increased. 
All this makes it clear that this research has contributed to addressing the problem of microplastics. The amount of emerging microplastics is very worrying, so we believe we should address this issue immediately, otherwise, it will be too late. Each individual can improve the situation by, for example, discontinuing the use of disposable plastic or not washing clothes unnecessarily. This research is only a small step towards the social change we strive for. It is, therefore, essential to find alternatives to plastic that will not burden the environment or harm animals and, consequently, ourselves.